Guardians, thanks for tuning in once again. It's myself and my lovely wife, Katie, here with you to talk all things related to partnership, being in relationship with one another in this crazy world called tattooing. Katie, you, you want to share some snippets? Yeah, we're going to focus on couples and conventions and um, how you can make it work for you with, with communicating expectations, kind of uh, mitigating your resentments and the magic that can happen when you let go of control. Mm, my God. Thanks for tuning in. This is a good one. Brothers and sisters, we can't thank you enough for all your love, your support, and your faithfulness. It's been brought to my attention. If you really want to do something to bless us, to thank us, apparently simply hitting the like button on YouTube would be more impactful than what I ever knew, let alone subscribing to us on YouTube if you're not already. And then over on Spotify and Apple, please leave us a review. All of your listening and your comments to us mean the world to us. Um, and do us a favor and just hit like on YouTube and leave us reviews on Spotify and Apple. And we're going to continue to serve you with our whole heart. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Tattoo Guardians podcast. Matt Clemmer, your host here, and my lovely, beautiful wife, Katie Stratton Clemmer as well. Right along with me tonight. How are you, dear? Hey, I'm good. Oh, my God. Thanks for joining me. Uh, And I say tonight because it's tonight and it's late night. (laughs) We're uh, breaking the mold because it's going on 1 a.m. We've got our own kids and extra kids over a slumber party at our house tonight. We had to tiptoe. Uh, we have a studio here in our basement, right? Yeah, it makes it convenient. But then I feel like this could get dangerous because I'm tired. I don't know. Are you tired? This could get really <laughs> wacky, but it could be kind of fun mm-hmm. <laughs> to see. But good morning, you <laughs> listeners that are tuning in. First thing, Monday morning. Hello and welcome. Hey, happy Monday. <laughs> well, yeah, wherever you're at in the world, whatever time or season you're in, whatever year this is, thank you for listening and we know that we're outside of time in the spirit realm. <clears throat> Hello, those of you from the future and the past, everyone in between. <clears throat> My God, I'm excited. Uh, we're here to share our hearts uh, on what I believe is such an important topic that's never going to go away if you desire a love life. No matter who or, or a what? Partnership. A partnership. Yeah. You know, no matter what. Couples and conventions, couples <laughs> and tattooing, this crazy life. And how do we make it work? How can it be bliss? How can it fit both of you? Serve both of you instead of it feeling like one of you've got to serve the other or put up with the other because. He's a tattooer or she's a tattooer and I'm along for the ride, right? And in the yeah. past, we've had examples. Oh, we've been through all of it. <laughs> right. Yeah. But I mean, even on the show, we've had examples yes. of couples in tattooing like Joshua and Nicole, yeah. Hip and Megan yeah. and so on and so on. And those examples, you know, because we've had both of the, all four of them on the show. Yeah. Um, and them sharing their experience in their hearts, and they're both beautiful. But a common through line of both of those examples is spouses that are fully immersed in it, literally physically in the flesh. They're in it together at the sh- in the shows together, you know. Yeah, which has its own separate kind of source of maybe pain points, trouble mm. um, when you're traveling together, when you're working together. I mean, yeah, yeah. you and I, <laughs> it could cause That's some right. problems. So. Um, Obviously, it feels like an ideal thing to um, be able to do those things together. But and I don't, and I feel like on this show we haven't shed a light on the whole opposite end of the spectrum, which is the category you and I come from. Because any of you listeners, any of you that knew Matt Clemmer way before the Tattoo Guardians podcast, whether it's from the Massachusetts conventions, Hell City, wherever the case may be, if you ever met me at a show, you never met her. No, <laughs> she wasn't fucking there, right? Yeah. But she was in spirit. Yeah, you know. And we touched on that. I think was that like, maybe the first episode I did mm-hmm. with you guys. We talked um, just kind of generally about sure. how my support looked a lot different than mm. um, 
definitely from like Joshua and, and Hip's partners. And, um, and there, it was easy to think that, um, or to feel bad, like maybe it should be different, but for us it worked. And so I know, you know, we have, we have kind of alluded and talked to stuff about stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah. In the past, you're right. And we, and I think I broke down the basic spectrum on one end, you've got the spouses where they're in it together, the husband and wife, the couple, the partnership, whatever the case may be. They're in the boot together. They're in the shop together. They're in the bookings together. They're in the bitchings together. They're (laughs) in the celebrations together. They're in it together. Right. If you're going for an award, they're in it together. You know, um, Nikki not only handles all Josh's booking, but runs the whole Evergreen (laughs) show. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Meg has always been a great hype man and front man. Right. Yeah. Um, And so it's beautiful when you see those couples. But and so we've shown that end of the spectrum. And then I think I peppered in that then the other end of the spectrum is a guy like me. And you don't even know what my wife looks like, right? <laughs> yeah. And to some folks, you would think like, you know, oh man, you know, if you see couples out there and then the spouse is in the booth, like cheering them on and just as stoked and hoping they may be placed and tattoo the day, whatever the case may be, you might start to write the story like, oh, man, my girl, like, ain't about it like that, right? Yeah. But to each their own. And I'm telling you, I just thank God. You know, and it's our love language, too. The support I've always gotten from you. Yeah. Like, from home has been powerful. But in almost my 20 years of tattooing, our almost 15 years of being a couple and you being immersed just dropped into the tattoo industry in the beginning we had to learn it all and go through it all like so many of you couples and tattoo artists and couples of figuring it the fuck out how you're gonna make your life work together your relationship work together and it doesn't feel like anything's lacking that you're actually whole and and that it's not like oh we gotta sacrifice our 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 relationship right now for your tattoo career that can happen. You feel right. We had to go through it all. Yeah. And I think because um, you were already very established in your tattoo career Mm. when we met. And so you were used to doing conventions on your own. You were used to working really late hours that had nothing to do with having um, a girlfriend, wife or um, a son, you know, because when, when you met me, I, Mm -hmm. my son was five. Mm -hmm. And so, we already were living very different lifestyles. Yes. Um, and I think that probably was initially what kind of kept us separated in that way where I'm like, you go off and do what you're used to doing and mm-hmm. doing it in the way that you're used to. And mm-hmm. I'm going to do things, you know, mm-hmm. how I do things. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, it works. It mm-hmm. worked. It does work. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, I, I don't know. I just, well, like, first of all, ladies and gentlemen, in, I hope that you can take a, a notes from my wife tonight and a page out of her notebook. Because first of all, let me just stop. Let's put pa- yeah. pause for a minute. Let me just tell you in real time, guys, <clears throat> even though I told you it's going on 1 a.m. tonight, and I told you we got extra kids spending the night. First of all, my wife is sitting here. We've been walking out her healing. Yeah. That's right. We should probably start. With We've that. been walking out her healing. <laughs> yeah. And that's a whole nother miraculous story. And she's getting better. Well, she's her body's healing right now under the sound of our voice. It's fucking yeah, I amazing. Mean, but even to, to tonight, I just got back from a lovely dinner. Everyone with whom you may ask myself and God. <laughs> <laughs> Why? <laughs> because my lovely wife sent me. Out to yeah. We want to go on date night ourselves, but fuck, we got wrecked with four kids or whatever the case may be. And she sent me out by myself. Now, I'm, I should have stayed home. No, <coughs> you look so nice. I'm like, <coughs> you look way too good. Way too nice. I got nice somebody to loves home. me so much. She like, you look too good to just come back home with kids. How about you go out, get yourself a couple cocktails, have yourself a steak, whatever. Treat yourself to some self love and my love by the gift. Guys, and to receive that gift, I did. Oh, but there's a bigger backstory. They don't know how hard it is for me to receive that gift. But I did to honor my wife and the gift of who she is. Mind you, our love is overflowing. I left glowing. 
Um, and it's resonating on me wherever I walk. Strangers notice that guy's got an extra glow. And yes, I'm filled with love, but it's also light from my wife. Whoa, are you even still listening? Yeah. You're a little too, right? No, but like just the the fact that I feel well enough that I can be like, hey, do you you want to mm, go? Like, you want to go anywhere by yourself? You want to go out for like, the first time in, in two that, years? Yeah, yeah. She got. She could say, I can be mom and aunt. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, we have. I a uh, nephew and niece over tonight, and it feels so good. I got to take them out this morning and just do, you know. We're, just we're do what? What'd you take them to do this morning, Kate? <laughs> oh, yeah. What'd you do? <laughs> we did goat yoga. <laughs> goat um, yoga. Y'all ever hear a goat yoga? <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. Like, I, I was like that. Like, I knew our four-year-old Sybil would, like, mm-hmm. be so into it. Mm-hmm. And um, it's it was amazing. You, like, you know, it's pretty basic yoga positions nothing too mm-hmm. crazy but when you're mm-hmm. like on your hands and knees and stuff the goats will just <laughs> jump on your oh back oh my god and it was amazing so i got to take uh uh Sibby, our, our four-year-old and my niece and um nephew and j- just little things like that are um weird fruitions of dreams that like just we we take that kind of stuff for granted when when we're, we're able-bodied and healthy and come on um, so just these little things like just getting to be an aunt and um, getting to be a normal mom on like a saturday getting morning to. doing goat yoga come on. <laughs> oh you know just that normal like goat yoga stuff oh my god but yeah and like i i shaved my head about a, a month ago and if might any, as well bring it up <laughs> yeah if anyone remembers um if you're watching us on youtube right now oh yeah you remember the last time katie was on the show she had long yeah. hair yeah and the the first episode i did with you guys and i talked about being sick and getting kind of um, sitting in that abyss and how I kind of like had a crazy look in my eye. I was like, I'm going to shave my head. Yeah. <laughs> and I didn't. And I'm glad I didn't because it probably would have. That was kind of maybe that idea was birthed out of like maybe a little mania and a little like mm. just like panic from having no idea what was going on with my body. But um, mm. I won't say that I didn't shave my head out of maybe a little bit of a nervous <laughs> breakdown <laughs> about a month ago. But um, it yeah, it, it kind of also came with a lot of healing. Like, you helped me. He, Matt walked in, and I had um, had been running the clippers through the front of my my head, and mm-hmm. he just walked in, and without even skipping a beat, he he grabbed them from me and and helped me finish the back. I did. And so I love it. It's actually yeah. like you know, there's a lot of freedom. And you know, I had a little regret finishing off the back because yeah. you doing it yourself. It was patchy. <laughs> and, and, and oh, I, I thought it, I was doing a really great job. You were doing job. great, but in the back is a little patchy, which is why I took over and made it perfect. <laughs> Part of me regrets not leaving the patch. Oh, I feel like there's already <laughs> like there's already oh spa- spots that are those <laughs> those growing in. <laughs> those of you who are, can even see her right now under the sound of our voice, isn't she beautiful? No. I'm I'm so grateful to be here and to be doing this in the middle mm. of the night is you, you know, know again I know it's. It. A, it's, it's very cool. Oh so, yeah. We, Why did I bring up that you just, out of the blue, though, sent me out to dinner even tonight? Why? Because it... It's applicable well, to... Well, it points to just who you are, yeah. you know. Um, and guys, especially when I met her, she's maybe a rare breed, which is why I want you to all take notes. Because even the beginning of our relationship, <clears throat> it almost was weird to me that she didn't seem to have a jealous bone in her body. Yeah. That led to me wanting to like make sure I was wanted by her, but uh, to prove my love. But it also led to freedom. But that was years ago. But guys, brothers and sisters, tattoo artists, spouses, wherever you're at in your relationship, you've been married, you got kids for years, you just now you've been dating for a few months. Wherever you're at. Let's get into this because I want to share with you just some of the things we've learned. And I'd like it to come through Katie um, and we'll interject of just some of the stages that we all go through and went through. And hopefully our experiences, I know, (laughs) are going to help. Yeah, because we I mean, obviously, this is, you know, what works for us. But we've learned a lot about what didn't work for us. Come on. (laughs) What maybe worked for a season and then. Stop let's give working. you some basics to yeah. start out. Just let's fast forward through the bullshit. Yeah. Okay. The sooner you can realize this is your one life, 
the better. I joke around, but I also mean it. In case that whole reincarnation thing don't quite work out, this might be the only shot we got. Let's fucking just go <laughs> ahead and get it. And other people say, even if it is, let's still get it, right? Yeah. This is your life, right? This is what you've taught me. Yeah, yeah. That this is your one life. This is my one life. And um, I want I want to see you thrive and be happy. And Come on, um, thrive and be happy. Yeah. Like, if there was something I really wanted to partake of, do, be, whatever... If the only reason why I wouldn't do it would be fill in the blank. Right. And usually it's out of um, not fear, but maybe not wanting to make your partner upset. Maybe, um, you know, typically when we want something and, and feel like we can't have it, it's usually because our partner um, either isn't on board. Um, you know what I mean? That's or like, is even secure enough in yeah. themselves or us or who I am or what we are, what we have. For you to actually be happy, but that's <laughs> let me let me not get rabbit trailed here. I'm just trying to paint the picture of the type of woman that I'm already blessed to have that seems so confident, didn't even seem to have a jealous bone in her body. So the position that she s- started from in our relationship was already a place of power. It wasn't a place of fear. It wasn't a place of insecurity. It wasn't a place of control. Trying to control me while I'm a tattoo artist. And but that came from a lot of years of learning from my previous marriage. But it's sexy as hell. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and it um, it's empowering to be able to say that that is genuinely how I feel, and it's not something I have to try too hard at. But I went through a lot of pain and experiences to even get to that point. My God. Um, okay. But it really like when you realize. Um, how much, how little control you have when you're grasping it, <laughs> when you're trying to control things, you're actually like squeezing it to death and really, really losing the control that you desire. Um, oh, you just said so much right there. And I yeah. think we're going to revisit that. Okay. We're just 15 minutes in on this conversation. And let's start out with, with the stages, brothers and sisters, because we've even, I've got, Oh, we see it all the time since we're a shop, uh, since we own shops and we're mentors and we raise up the next generation. You and I have been in the game. You know, I've been in the game almost 20 years. You've been rolling with me almost 15. We've been a shop owner for, I don't know, seven years now. Whatever the case may be, you have been a mentor for many. So we've seen a few things. <clears throat> we've experienced them as well. And we see whenever a new person enters the game whether it be an apprentice a new artist and there's a new partner a new partner yeah. or you know in how it's life-changing not only for the person that's entering the tattoo industry because as you know now it's a lifestyle yeah for someone to immerse themselves in it you know it becomes part of your life and so whoever you're connected to in relationship with partner to married to Dayton it's directly going to affect them that's why when i became an apprentice the gal i was with ended up leaving me right because i never was home right and i can imagine like you don't half ass things so i imagine your apprenticeship was pretty intense 100 hour weeks oh my god by choice right exactly no one made me so your girlfriend at the time i'm assuming Mm -hmm. knew that was your choice well totally i felt like she wasn't yeah chosen yeah and was Audi eventually yeah. after, you know, regardless. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get into that. That sounds juicy. That's like 1 a.m. conversation. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like, I, I mean, I, I get it. I get it because I don't know how long you guys were together before mm-hmm. you started apprenticing. But like, yeah. it would be a hard pill to swallow mm-hmm. if you were used to something and then all of a sudden, like maybe without communication or if you Well, know. but even that, because I guess, guess what? We were a couple prior to my apprenticeship. So we thought we knew what we were signing up for, oh, right? Famous, we thought. Right. And <laughs> yeah. I think that's what I was getting at is you yeah. and I've been in the game long enough that whether it's new people we hire, new apprenticeships I bring in, yeah. and we'll notice that it's culture shock for not only the person that's in house, but yeah. for their spouse. And you have no idea. In the worst trap, we all know it, Tattoo Artists, whether you're an apprentice or you've been in the game for fucking 20 years, to be trying to be your best. 
whether it's consulting, putting proper value on yourself, delivering your product and service, doing a dope tattoo, all of it. We got enough on our shoulders. And I don't know about you, a lot of us artists, I'm not good at compartmentalizing. And if we not good, if me and her, if I'm not good at home, my God, talk about taking the wind out of your sails. And we know what it's like if you're an apprentice, if you're new tattooer and your spouse is at home bitching at you, don't understand. They got resentments about you and your studio and your boss. And why is he, the, she and this blah, 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 right? It's <laughs> extra weight on your shit. Or if you're like been in the game for 15 years and you're at Evergreen or Hell City or Hunts Vegas, Tattoo Convention, Empire State, wherever, and you're trying to do your best, you're trying to overcome your own imposter syndrome, you're trying to network with people, you're trying to be social, and your spouse is at home sending you shitty texts <laughs> just to, like, jab you in the side to let you know you do suck, right? Or whatever, like... It can make or break, you know? Yeah. And that fundamentally is a misunderstanding oh. and a miscommunication. Oh, across the board. Yeah. And so I think that's where we kind of wanted to start was um, a big part of it. Like you said, if you're either new as an artist, like an apprentice, or you are um, new to dating or being with an artist. Um, in a new relationship with it's somebody. It's really hard to understand a, a convention culture. Y'all know what the fuck you signing up for, <laughs> right? <laughs> no, not at all, all because, right. I mean, I think it depends on, obviously, the artists and what, you know, everyone goes to conventions for different reasons, mm -hmm. right? Like, we talked That's about right. that. Um, yeah. There's a lot of networking opportunities. Um, you would go specifically mm -hmm. To like do massive pieces and um, there was a certain season where yeah. I'm, I'm always going to network and to be inspired. Yeah, that's by a given. Beautiful fucking people and artists that are laying it down in ways I can't, don't, won't ever. And it's like, damn, I love that's how you feel. I love how you move. Right. Yeah. Boom. Always going to get inspired by my people from all over the world. But yes, there's a season where if I'm going to the show, I'm going to show up and shell out and I'm going for tattoo of the day. And really, I'm going for best show. Yeah. And you knew that was a season I was in. Yeah. And I did that. And I would take tattoo of the day. I would take best show and like years in a row. It was right? not this like um, kind of easy thing for you. It wasn't like effortless. It wasn't like a normal um, tattoo session. Thank At home. You. Well, and anybody <laughs> you listen knows what it takes to even take tattoo of the day once, let alone twice, let alone make it the point you're going to do it every time, <laughs> let alone contending and winning best of show multiple times. I mean, you win it once, you all know that's hard. You win it twice, people are like, damn. You win it three times, like, what? Right. <coughs> so, yes, back yeah. to what you're saying. Yes. I fundamentally <coughs> did not understand. <coughs> convention culture right. um i i knew what it was like being around you when you were working in your home shop yeah and even that was intense mm -hmm. and i felt bad being there you know mm -hmm. i was like oh this feels like therapy I, I don't feel like i feel like you and your client would be better off alone those were kind of things that i dealt with early on but um when it came to you being away at conventions i had no idea um what you were experiencing what it was like um mm -hmm. the intensity of it um so That's, boom, right yeah. there, being unclear on what we're signed up for. So it, since she didn't have a clue or what, since she didn't know. No, I truly and, didn't. And I wasn't clear. We didn't clearly. It, that's where resentment started early on. You're yeah. home pissed, writing all these stories. What the fuck? Why is he you yeah. right? Because we never talked about like yeah. the expectations mm -hmm. of communicating um, what that looked like. She's hurt, maybe resentful. Right. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, you would leave on what a Wednesday night, like really late, yeah. maybe Thursday. I can't. If remember. I'm traveling. <laughs> yeah. yeah. If yeah, you're right, driving right. and stuff. And, and there would be um, early on and no, really at any at any point yeah. I wouldn't hear from you the entire weekend. Yeah. Right. And it would be. We like, should already. Does like, he know skirt. whether we're alive? You know. Right. <laughs> yeah. I would instantly be like, like, there's no way. Like he has. Is he curious? Totally. Um, all of that stuff, but it was... How's um, he just going to disappear and not even talk to me? Is he not even give a fuck? I yeah. swore he said he loved me, <laughs> you know, yeah. right? Yeah, and but then if I'm being honest, <coughs> there were um, there were times when you would finally call and you would step out either to smoke and just to have a minute to call me. Mm -hmm. And even in that moment, I could hear you getting pulled 
mm-hmm. people coming out wanting to talk. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, there were moments where I would get frustrated at that mm-hmm. feeling like, you have to make time for us. That's like, right. You know, and we figured that out early on that like, no one's going to say, hey, Matt, go call your wife and we're all going right. to respect your space. Right. <laughs> like, so, and that does not happen. On, I remember early on, I'd be on like no sleep. Yeah. Like calling her like before judging, hoping I win best show or tattoo the day. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Finally, like I'm done, you know. And it's probably and, tense. <laughs> and I'm in like trouble or she's fucking hurt. She's yeah. pissed. She ain't heard from me in fucking 36. And I don't compartmentalize that stuff well. Right. Like, and I'm fried. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Now I'm like spent because I've given my all. I've thrown it out on the court. And then the love of my life at home feels depleted while I'm depleted. And it like immediately like nothing mattered especially if i didn't win the award <laughs> you know what i'm saying like well fuck you yeah know what like what, what, yeah. <laughs> what was all of that for even though you know and again that you know when we say convention culture that was the season i was in right. there are people who go to conventions are never going for awards and they're you know but you can still like now you have an understanding right. like, to do a show and to do it right, to fully immerse yourself in that work. It's busy. And cr- right. Right. And there is, a, I think, the opposite side of that is there might also be an assumption that it's just one big party. Like, yeah, right. It's just like That's right. everyone kind of like hanging out and rubbing elbows and then everyone's like going out drinking afterwards. And there's mm-hmm. usually a big party afterwards. Like there could it can be, be. Right. Mm-hmm. And so th- there's so many different um ways to do conventions mm-hmm. and be a part of it all with under, you know, under mm-hmm. this big totally. um, room. Um, and so depending on like how you are with your partner and the type of person you are, when you like to go out and travel mm-hmm. and, and be around your peers, mm-hmm. that could be a pain point as mm-hmm. well. If your partner is maybe insecure, mm-hmm. um, doesn't quite understand what's happening or, um, I'm just so fucking lucky because to have a partner where you can, this, she's just secure guys, and I can just go ahead and be myself, and own it, and and tell her who I am. It took a while though. It took maybe twelve years. <laughs> <laughs> right? Do what we did. It's yeah. just a twelve-year waiting. So period. let's give them some good like highlight. Okay, so yeah, we're so just first at, like, like understanding really, the culture, yeah, understanding, understanding yeah. whether it's your man's going to the shows or whether it's your sweetheart going to the shows, your spouse, your partner's going to the show. Yeah. Right? And if you are going every time, if, if you're, you're not going visiting, off, you're staying at yeah. home like you did. Yeah, and I think one thing I've regretted from the past few times being on here is never um, talking about, I had a career as well. Yeah, totally. I, we always like kind of talk about, about the I'm staying of the tattooer <laughs> right? or I'm staying home just, to be mom. Yeah. And that was true, but I also was trying to build my own career. And mm-hmm. so that was a huge reason why I wasn't going because I had my own things that I was doing mm-hmm. um, as so well. So shout out to every like yeah. spouse of every tattoo artist on here that like yeah. your identity isn't, doesn't have to just be wrapped around spousal support either way like there's no right or wrong but um i'm like why didn't i i say like oh i have my own (laughs) like you're a strong powerful woman yeah i have my own ambitions and my my own things i was working on out you know outside of being a mom why didn't you say that i don't know. know now looking back I, I think that's kind of my default, don't you think? Right? Mm-hmm. I get oh, like yeah. a little shy talking about that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Whether you know. I know the answer, I was just asking for them. Was that the, <laughs> was that the answer? Well, you're definitely overly modest. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I don't know. It's just yeah, I have my own thing I was working on. Um, whether it was photography or blogging or painting, I I, I was doing things that required my time outside of parenting and outside of supporting you to the point guys where i would be trying to travel the world and win awards and would do so and sometimes it it, like barely be impressive to her that's like, not oh, true i know it just seemed like it was like that's good yeah cool huh? because like, uh, i'm not <laughs> overly impressed by you know accolades that's not why i like you you're right I so know. maybe that's she why i don't talk fuck. about my own accolades yeah, i know. Uh, but, you know i love that about you okay she, good. you know i'm the dude that's like going for the awards and would give oh. my left nut and would get it and she'd be like 
cool. <laughs> She'd be like, you but you're already are rewriting history. I'm sorry. I was so proud of you. <laughs> you were, I, I just know. didn't, it, you know, we've the, talked about this. I didn't, it didn't make me like, I wasn't like, well, still didn't make me day. into you more. Well, I know. I was That's really proud of you. fucking beautiful about you. Is yeah, like you don't what really have matters. to do things. <laughs> I'm saying, but that's true for everyone. You tell you shouldn't to have to win those kind of things to Come like on. keep your your it's, partner, or your person like into you. Well, um, yeah, it's 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 all it's icing on top of all of it. Well, but that's part of your nothing poem. It's yeah, it's the difference between if something matters to you versus what you think it matters about you. Right, and so those awards did not matter about, about you. Me. They matter a lot to me. They matter to you, but yeah. it doesn't change. Who you are. You hear that, everybody? <laughs> yeah. Same goes for you. Yeah. Happy day, my God. Well, yeah. this whole thing stems to communication, but let's keep going. What else did we have we learned along yeah, the way? Yeah, so, like, once you kind of understand the culture, understand who you become in that convention culture, whether you're, like, a traveling artist mm -hmm. or whether you're just going to, you know, conventions that are drivable <laughs> or whether you're flying across the country or across yes. the world. Like, once you understand... Who you are. Yeah. And what, you're going, and what you're wise and what you're even going for. Yeah. What lights you up? Like, yeah. you know, and, you know, there's all types. Like, I know artists that don't even have a home shop. And they go from Just city travel. to city. You know what I'm saying? Sounds And they exciting. get there Wednesday, load in Thursday. Oh, then, no, that up. sounds exhausting, actually. <laughs> I'm just saying. You know. No, I mean, it's, yeah, it's it's probably not for everyone. <laughs> but there but are all cool. kinds of models. That's a blessing about this industry. Oh, my gosh, that you make it whatever you want. So much. So yeah. much so. But you have to figure that out. Know it yourself and be able to clearly communicate to your spouse. So they got a clear vote. Yeah. You know, and thank God I was wrong with you. If I would have known myself clear enough to convey it to you on the front and be like, <laughs> babe, this is where conventions are like for me. Yeah. This is the mode I'm in. Don't expect I'm going to throw myself in a hole and not even sleep. I'm going to be torn. You know what I'm saying? If you yeah. see me online for five minutes, I might be on the shit or for a set like. Right. You know? And we realize that because I would. I would be like, man, I haven't heard from him. And I'd be like, oh, well, he, I mean, he's like posting stuff or he's on he's online. So I'm like imagining that if you had time to do that you would have, but now realizing like that might have been your only quiet moment or you actually might have been in the bathroom mm -hmm. <laughs> and so i'm like okay there's all these assumptions mm -hmm. so I think, it didn't yeah. mean to me at the time like <laughs> i'm spent i'm giving as much as i can yeah. of course you know i love people even if i'm in the bathroom stall like there's people <laughs> waiting on me to come out to do photo like to give hugs all yeah, that shit and that's gift. what i live for right you know that right? yeah i know that and but i knew that at the that. same time early on it, you know it's easy to write the story well like yeah i know because something i know you realize early on like you're gonna have to share me with the world yes right but at the same yeah. time it's like but don't put the world above me there, and that's with that a, yeah. lack of communication, it made you feel like, I don't mind sharing with the world. And you go to Massachusetts or wherever and paint the whole streets in love, but not in front of us, not in front of me. Like, right. right? I had to, like we've we've figured out that, like, as long as I feel prioritized, as uh -huh. long as I know uh -huh. I'm like your number one. So um, right now, you guys would think, so what did, how did I change my calls and on the conventions? And how many times did I check in with her and call on her so that she felt number one before I loved on anyone else? Boy, that sounds exhausting, don't it? Well, luckily, that was not our answer. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm with such a fucking powerhouse, strong woman, even though she had to and to feel prioritized, which, by the way, I do, too, to even go out there. Oh, a full, yeah. right? A full cut. We both do. Right. But what really ended up setting us free is, was letting go of any expectations, wasn't it? No expectations. I, I, I think I've, I've realized with you that it's, um, it's easier just to see what happens because mm. you do get kind of swept up in moments and mm. take them. Mm. And I admire that about you. Mm. you know? um, and so it would be easy to say, well, text me every night, you mm -hmm. know, or like. But even that may not necessarily work for you. And right. it might be setting you up mm -hmm. for, or us up mm -hmm. for more resentment, more mm -hmm. failure. So mm -hmm. um, what we kind of came down to is that you don't have to communicate with me at all. <laughs> Guys, and she set us both free. She set herself yeah. <laughs> free from building any resentments. 
And she was like, you know what? So that I almost like so that we're not, I'm not pissed at you or I don't get any resentment, whatever. Like, let's yeah. set us both free. I know you're busy. And so she would send me out on the road with zero expectation. I don't, she don't have to hear from me. Like, what have, time's your flight? Yeah. Come back in. I'll see you Monday. Cool. I'll see you Monday. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that sounds maybe like severe or that sounds like, whoa, like, or like one position is <laughs> totally just given up. Right. Yeah. It wasn't, it wasn't done in a defeating way. It nope. was just done in a realistic way. And yeah. I think that came from us communicating yeah. and realizing what our expectations are. Yeah. And for me, it was, um, more so, I just wanted to know that you cared, that we were okay yeah. <laughs> while you were gone. Right. Um, and so what's worked for us is that when you leave, there is zero expectation of you to communicate. Yeah. And um, what I do is I will either text you every night or every morning, like, hey, I love you. Um, we're good. Uh, maybe mm-hmm. this is what's going on. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I'll send him pictures because depending she knows on I what's s- up. Because she knows that I truly give a shit about yeah. what's going on at home with her and the kids. It gives and you really, peace and to it be gives gone. me peace. She's letting me know now. Because now that she knows my heart, because she doesn't have to wonder if I care. I don't have to prove that. She knows that. We got to that place. It's like, right? Yeah. But at the same time, she knows I still need peace about our children, what's happening today, and even her. Yeah. And her peace of mind, you know what I'm saying? Right. Well, especially when I got sick, it was. Oh, my God. I know it was like brutal for you to, to leave. even leave. Yeah. Is, yeah. Yeah. Um, so that, again, that communication. <laughs> priceless. I, do, I don't want to jump ahead, but like. Right. So, okay. But do you want to? You maybe want to we could to? save it, but like. Something magical happened. Um, it's a magic trick, and I feel like <laughs> yeah. you want to tell them. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. well, I go ahead. I realize in what happened when we decided to just go into it with no expe- expectation of you communicating. We. She fucking decided. <laughs> yeah, like, but ahead. it was yeah we did understanding but, uh, yeah. your needs, like I truly know. your needs outside of mine. Like when you really care about who you're with. I wanted to know, like, ideally, what would you want when you leave? Like, what would be, what do you need? What do you want? And mm. it was to have um, no extra pressure on you. Come on. Y'all hear that? Okay. And so I could do that. Jeez. Because for me, all I wanted to know was but that you cared. What made you so. come to that? Because I didn't come to you and be like, baby, I'm like, I don't need no extra pressure. All these people. I Even if I thought that, I didn't come to you. Like, I think I, I just know you. And, um, my God. You know, we, we know each other well enough to be able okay. to. Um, so what's the magic The trick? magic thing that happened. You took the pressure off. You're like, you know what, boo? I'm going to see you. And I believe you. And you spread thin. You know what? Don't even worry about hollering. If you yeah. do, cool. If not, cool. But I'm going to let you know that we good every morning so you can be yeah. at peace. You go get them, boo. Yeah. Fucking get them. Like, whoa. And the magic trick that happened is that he communicates more <laughs> with me now that he doesn't have to <laughs> than he ever did when I was hoping he did or got mad at him if he didn't. Like, literally, mm. he will... He will text me or call from the airport. He's sending me photos. <laughs> it's Ooh. wild. And I did not expect that at all. <laughs> and uh, it's like that really stupid phrase. Like, if you love something, let it go. <laughs> and if it doesn't come back, it was never yours. Yeah, right. or, you know, or whatever uh-huh. that is. Or if it comes yeah. back to you. Like, yeah. that's literally what it feels like. And so that's the magic trick is like when you stop trying to control something to the point where you are projecting negativity and resentment and anger, just by kind of releasing that control, mm. Mm. Um, in a weird way, I almost felt like I had more control. Yes. Because I could control yeah. uh, my side of things. I'm going to communicate with him. Mm. Um, I could control my resentments because mm. they're not going to exist anymore. Mm. Um, and with that freedom and lightness, um, I don't know if it felt like a gift to you. It just has made you want to communicate more. Come on, Um, baby. Yeah. Because it gave me room to be me when I wanted to be, when I want to express versus me trying to be who I thought I was supposed to be that you were demanding of me or else. Yeah. Right. 
talk about stifling creativity on the piece I'm doing today or whoever I'm consulting with, let alone in my relationship with you, all masked in fear from judgment, right? This yeah. is the trap, brothers and sisters, because it turns into a fight and you get distracted from what you're both fighting for. Yeah, when really it's ultimately the same thing. You're fighting <laughs> for the same thing. Yeah. And the trap is to... You know, you accidentally start fighting one another, and that's what we're here to help pull you out of. Right? Yeah, yeah. But that condemnation, you know, and all that, in that control, yeah. right? Then it stifles the creativity. Oh my gosh! And, yeah. and stifles the authenticity of me being free to be me, and it causes me to try and be who I think I'm supposed to be that you want me to be yeah. to keep you happy while I'm trying to keep my client happy. And now I'm on the back burner trying to breathe. And right? I mean, and I know you're, you know, you're a, speaking. To you're a rare bird. I truly don't think you can be anything but yourself. <laughs> and that's probably why you couldn't communicate. Well, because even though you knew I wanted you to, you are who you are. <laughs> and so it was more like you have to be yourself. But now you're being yourself and you know that I'm going to be resentful about it. And that... Um, it's a terrible, it's a terrible place to be, but especially I when you're an you. artist and you're. And like, I think I was trying to paint the picture for so many people listening right now. If you're a spouse and you feel bound up and judged and just like, a, you know, whatever, like uneasy, like not at peace with your own spouse. And it's not just tonight. It's not just this week. It seems like fucking all the time. All right. Yeah. But this is your one life. And, oh, my God. And what are you all going to do about it? Like, yeah. even if we, we've had times where we've had to set our emotions aside and even, like, look at each other and talk as if we're, like, splitting up. But emotions aside and really just have authentic talk on, like, okay, fuck, <laughs> if we burn it all down. What for? For our true, our own truth and our own happiness. Like what I really need. <sighs> Fuck all the dumb shit. And what you really need. <sighs> Fuck all the dumb shit. Yeah. And you're right. And realizing that like true maturity is knowing that like we are not allowed to hold resentments, especially not with our partner. Like if you're doing that, then you are not communicating the truth come on say that and again she just said needs. so much we are not allowed true maturity yeah. to hold resentments and if we are it's because we're not just truly communicating we're not keeping it 100 we're not just being honest with ourselves let alone to, to with each other now guys this isn't yeah. judgment I come on here every week and talk to you. So you may think I'm a master communicator. I talk on this microphone. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you laughing. <laughs> I need like a chortle right now. Like, oh, <laughs> the most laughable. <laughs> no, I mean, we. <laughs> so, right. We're not. <laughs> so I'm not a great. <laughs> the worst communicator uh, of all time. that? Okay. He, of all time. <laughs> <laughs> Take that award. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the ultimate miscommunicator. Mm. Um, I don't know. Yeah, well, I mean, we still proof. struggle like, with that. So what I'm sharing, <laughs> what we're sharing with you right now isn't from like our high horse that we're like. Oh, God, no. <laughs> it's from so much experience. And we're currently going through stuff where totally. we've miscommunicated and caused pain and trying to like figure it all out. And um, and so I'm no in real time can say that I am not allowed to hold resentments um, as as a mature. What like, does that mean? Uh, that means that I have to like, either Can you give be, us an example? Like for years, aren't, do you have an yeah, example? I got well, one if you don't. No, you can go ahead. Many years of our life, I was a morning person. You resented me every day, right? Is yeah. that an example you can use or no? Yeah, I was going to use a convention example. Oh, do that's that. cool. Yeah, um, do it. So, like, because you worked so much when you were home and then when you would travel, um, there was a sense for me that I was like, oh, he's getting to leave, even though it was for work. You know, you oh. rarely travel just for, like, you know, your own, you know, just for fun or with friends. But, totally. Yeah. Um, so maybe they're not comparable. But one way early on that I 
could control my resentment was when you would leave or if you were um, working like a season, like a ton. The only you, way I couldn't you, get you weren't going to see me this week. The yeah. Next four days. Sure. Or if like, yeah, um, I realized like the best way for me to not get resentful was to have something for myself to look forward to. So whether that was OK, he's he's traveling a lot this month. OK, so maybe the next month um, I'm going to already have a trip planned. Um, That's good. And so with that, so every time you left, it wasn't like, oh, he's like off doing all this stuff and I'm just stuck here at home and I'm trying to work and take care of like everything. It, it was almost like, OK, he's going, but like I'm going to get to go soon and he's excited for me and I'm excited. So um, example of that, like because you're talking hypothetical, like. Yeah. Can we tell them we've said in the past you're a big Harry Potter fan? Yeah, yeah. You're an amazing mother, and yeah. you're also someone that needs your alone time. Yeah. So for those variables right there, a gift for you that would be self-serving, self-love, recharging, would be to give you some alone time and send you somewhere that fills you up. Yeah. Right? Yeah, so I, I went to Harry Potter World yeah. in Orlando by myself, yeah, and that was on. the first time I'd ever flown alone. But leading up to that, I remember – feeling so freed up you could be as busy as you wanted you could mm -hmm. do it because i had this trip mm -hmm. because i had this thing mm -hmm. and so like it doesn't what, have to be that big right because what about for the people that can't afford no that? it's like even just little things like um i know we, i had talked to one of the the spouses of one of the artists at our shop and um it was early on with her husband traveling to conventions mm -hmm. and it was like god like this is really hard, not mm -hmm. like fully understanding the culture mm -hmm. and, you know, a lot of that communication. And I was like, the best advice I could give her was to like, <coughs> make this such a fun weekend for yourself. For herself. And right. Yeah. Because a minute ago you're bringing up a little cool. I'm going to let my man, I'm going to support him. He's at whatever convention he's traveling. He'll be back. And then I'm going to treat myself and go somewhere. And yeah. that's fun. Yeah. Right. But I love how once we had it planned out and you knew I was going to be gone for this stretch, that yeah. you planned the most epic time with the kids while I was gone or for yourself yeah. while I was gone. Like, it's not like you just hunkered down and waited for me to go like I'm at war. Yeah, like, right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right. Oh, you're going to be partying over here? Cool. I'm going to plan to party right the fuck here and do that, right? Yeah. Like, we are going to be so busy while you're gone mm -hmm. that we're not going to have time to even so wonder. So, pictures like, that you'd sent me were, like, yeah. from your adventures that yeah. brought me peace. You guys are at Kings Island or you're fucking <laughs> having pizza or yeah. you built a fort or whatever. Yeah. Whatever, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, just you finding all got flashlights joy. out. You went and hunted lightning bugs. Whatever the kid, you <laughs> yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's, and it's more of that communication. And that caused me. Now I'm communicating with you out of love. Yeah. I miss you. I'm checking in. I'm hiding from people. And you're my <laughs> place of refuge. Yeah. I'm sending you a quick selfie. But yeah. now it's not out of a place of I'm trying to fill a void yeah. or I have Keep to do this or I'm in trouble. <laughs> yeah. So that my our account's not in the negative. <clears throat> yeah. We're operating from a place of already whole. So now I can just like run and hide to you. Yeah. And 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 I do. And it's not on demand. Yeah. And I'm not sitting around waiting for that. Mm -hmm. You know, like we we are crazy busy and like, you know. It so, calls us to miss each other more. I, oh my gosh. Yeah. It's yeah, kind of so. romantic. Yeah. Oh it's, yeah. You can it's just so much easier to go to one another when it's free and you're not afraid of um, I'm not afraid misstepping of being or trouble. being in trouble now for all you listen be like man that sounds great clemmer but i'm fucking always in trouble <laughs> <laughs> oh i fear you hey well now what this is our one life. One, it, uh, one, it takes opening up and saying, this is what I need. Can you do that? Mm -hmm. And what do you need? So back to Can I do that? <laughs> yeah. And so we made a list. There's. A, did you all know there's a difference between like your needs and your list or your wish list? Like there's a whole lot of things that like she wished I would do. There were things she <laughs> wished about me. Then Probably hopes and vice that, versa. <laughs> yeah. And hopes that maybe I'd fucking change that or work on it or get better at it. Yeah. 
But this she also had to check, though, is it an absolute deal breaker? Like, can she not live with me because of it? And then, the, you know, that's the huge difference. Right. Well, no, it's not that I couldn't live with the guy. I fucking love the guy. I just wish he was fucking different in that character. But it's not a deal breaker. And if it's not a deal breaker, that's what she means by then she can't resent me for it, even though she wished it was different. Right. And then how can I not resent you? And I know we've we've touched on that and before vice versa. In, previous, in a previous episode, but in, um, it literally is that choice. Um, is this something I can live with? And how does that look? What does that look like? Mm. And if it's not, it's not. And I'm not going to make you miserable it the does. rest of your life for being yourself Come on, and, and doing versa. something that you never promised you could or couldn't do. Come um, on. And we rarely really, and maybe like, I don't know. I had never been in a relationship before where we really talked about that kind of stuff. Thank you. We don't talk about it, but we project it right, right and left, don't we? Yeah. But it's hard. Like even, even now, um, bringing up something that even is a potential resentment is mm-hmm. vulnerable. Mm. Um, it it's not easy, right. um, but it's definitely worth it, um, mm-hmm. especially in an industry where there's just so many different ways of being, and there's so many different types of people, and um, insecurities can pop up. Obviously, because it's a very intimate type of career. Um, what I'm curious about is something that I haven't experienced, and I'm actually going to my first out of state convention with Ladies you. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> you hear that? Katie is hitting the road with me and joining yeah. me at this year's at our brother Rock show at the Hunts Vegas Tattoo Convention in Huntsville, Alabama. We will be there June 9th. Oh my gosh, find me if you guys, yeah, if any of you are there, I can't if wait you ever, to get If you to, want to meet Katie in the flesh, I'm she's going to be there. Gonna be, Rolling in the deep with us. What? <laughs> but this is unknown. So the other side of this that I think is important that we touch on yeah. is all of this is probably true for um, people who partner up and travel together or go to conventions together. Okay. You could still have the miscommunication and the resentments. Thank you. And I'm it just curious what that looks like. You. That's why, like, what was the first thing on our list is, like, understanding the culture, your yeah. why. Like, what is your spouse? What are you even going to this show for? And what what are you going for? What's the plan? What's the goal? Yeah, are you like going you're to support? Yourself, are you going? All of it. Yeah. You know. Just um, to like get but away and travel. communication. Because, yes, we know of the couples that are fully immersed and the spouse is in the booth with the spouse on the front lines, rocking it, running it, cheering it, leading it, heading it, promoting it, yeah, all that. Yeah, do it well together. And then you and I are the example of doing it just as strong, but in the spirit realm. Not physically there in the flesh. Yeah. But I think I was sharing with you, too. Just because couples are at the show together doesn't mean like they're the power couple because we all know what it's like to have the <laughs> awkward couple there where yeah, they're, you know fighting they're, not, day. <laughs> they're get, not getting along. It's oozing out their pores. It's creating like uncomfortability for all. Even if they hold it in until they get to their hotel room, you better hope to God you're not in the same floor. You know what I'm saying? So, so. What, what does that look like? Is that... Um, I guess, you know, obviously it's, it's hard to say because every couple is different, but I am imagining there's automatically kind of this imbalance of power, especially if um, there's not two artists involved. If one's the tattoo artist and one is the supporting partner. Um, See right there is where I got to stop you. And it may seem like an imbalance of power. Oh, yeah, it does. But it's not. It could be. It could be in both ways. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm just saying yeah. if like. If you're if your if when we're artist along, partner yeah. is a little mm-hmm. bit of an ego and this is about me and I'm doing yeah. this thing yeah. and they expect you to run, you know, do all these things and that's not properly communicated or um, know, you feel I'm respected. The, totally. And I get that. Yeah. But flip it. If I'm the artist thinking whatever, going yeah. for whatever. And if my spe- if you and I ain't getting along, right. like you mad at me. Uh, I'm just sitting there like glaring at you. The (laughs) the power you have over me to take the wind out of my sails make me bum now. Don't matter how cool of a fucking tattoo I do because I'm bum because you bum. We met. You know what I'm saying? Just saying. So even though it's a different power play, like I could be the dopest artist in the world, but like 
you got still got power over me. That's, That's why I think it's you like, let me have that power. Not well, all not all partnerships. Of, yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> fucking kudos. Shout out to the motherfuckers that don't give a fuck. Right, but like, <laughs> whose face is on this massive banner? You know, know like who's still, all, like people are not there. Right. Would not be there to see me. They would be there to see you. Right. And so if you. Um, we're in a little that, bit of riding your ego. It, it could on. feel, it does feel like an imbalance of power. We it. are there for you. I get it, but it could go either way. That's the importance yeah. of this conversation of us being like fucking yeah. one and aligned. It's just, the you know, because my God, that's, that's like that cliche saying since you're bringing them up. Behind, <laughs> every, <laughs> behind every good man is what? A great woman. Yeah. And that's so true, right? Yeah. yeah. But that's why it could be flipped behind oh, every yeah, dude. It's, it's like tweak could be a woman that's like fucking with him, right? Either yeah. way, that's why I think what do we always talk about? Choosing our position. Yeah. We know what it's like. We could pull the worst out of one another or the best. Yeah. Right? Everyone can. That's scary too, because sometimes you like don't see it coming. You know, no. like we can't sometimes we can't control yeah. when whether you're triggered. Or totally. whether like you just get into like a little spat. And like, mm-hmm. now I do understand the culture and understand mm-hmm. how tense it can be um, mm-hmm. and how um, any little mistake can mm-hmm. um, cause it to affect the tattoo, whether it's going to be done in time for judging or all of these things are so much at stake. And so if your partner's with you and are there to help, uh, there's definitely it seems like has to be proper communication on what that looks like and the respect to yeah. um, make sure it's being done in a respectful way, yeah. uh, whether it's the asking or it's the doing. Back to the communicating. Oh, God, we're going to find out. <laughs> I love it. Well, no, we already found out. Well, thank God. It's like, I'm just we're gonna going to sit there. Baby. And- <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's like, we came to Hans Vegas. Me, man, you guys Katie. see me brooding. They were in a <laughs> fight. Man, Katie, we're in a fight at Hans Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> they just did this whole episode and they still don't know what's up. But again, this is kind of the unknown for us. Mm. But I mean, we know each other well enough. I, I guarantee oh, yeah, it's going to yeah. be fine. But um, it's just interesting you. for me to to just look at it up from the other end and see that it's the same things are applicable. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. What else you got on there, on there? That was really like, about yeah. it. Like, Did we hit our four? Let's it just kind of can. ultimately stops at like. Um, understanding, caring to understand, mm-hmm. um, being open to finding out because like if, if the art, if, you, if you're an apprentice, you don't know mm-hmm. and people could tell you, but you don't know what you're going to be like. So just um, for everyone to be just a little empathetic, a little open, mm-hmm. especially if you're new to it, mm-hmm. uh, communicating and um, clearly commuting, communicating your expectations, finding out what those are Um Mitigating your resentments if you feel them coming or if they are there. Uh, mitigating your resentments, huh? Yeah. And then the magic trick of letting, it go. letting control go and finding out that, oh, it's it's actually um, stronger. Um, but, I mean, that's, that's hard to say because that's the kind of partner you are for me. Yeah. Um, I don't know why you have chosen to communicate more. Like maybe, like, I guess we did kind of talk about it, <laughs> but it wasn't <laughs> like, that was not the end game, you know, like, uh, so it did, it did feel like magic because, you know, mm-hmm. but I don't know if every partner, like what I wouldn't want is for someone to be like, this is the magic trick and I'm going to do this. And this is going to happen. Cause that's setting up an expectation. Sure, that, sure. Right. Um, so right. really it has to be for you to say like, mm-hmm. I'm going to let go of this resentment. Um, and I'm going to find out that, like, I, I still have just as much control because I'm controlling myself. Mm-hmm. And um, my bet would be that your partner feels that and I'm feels freed I'm up saying, from that. saying, but did you hear what the fuck she just said? What the fuck you just say, girl? I don't know. Like, um, no, but you just, I'm um, saying. What, what did I say? Well, you're taking responsibility. Because oh, yeah. I'm controlling myself. Yeah, the ultimate control is controlling ourselves. It is such a power play, and that's so sexy and so attractive. But that takes a certain amount of security, certainty, and strength to choose that position. The fuck? Yeah. You're choosing yourself regardless of my position, but that alone, you choosing that standard of such security, uh, 
almost not only gives me the freedom to pick my position, yeah, but makes yours so much more attractive. You know, I've said it before, like your two favorite people you'll meet your whole life is either the person that's most comfortable in their own skin, self-control. Yeah. Or the person that makes you feel comfortable in your own, in your skin. Yeah. By l- letting you be free to be you. Yeah. Right. And this is what we're talking about. These are the gifts that you've taught me and that you have given me, you've given us yeah. as you've learned to develop them, to let go of your own control oh, yeah. and mitigate. It's from feeling disempowered and trying to control things and you feel nothing but disempowered. And it's like, I don't want to feel like because this. Because the ping pong, before you started to mitigate resentments and look at it differently and let go, you would come to me with hurt, judgment, accusations, whatever. Oh, what yeah. would it cost for me? Defend, deflect, Mm -hmm. come back, ping pong. Yeah. Well, no, you did this, you didn't do this, and it means this. And I'd be like, well, no, I was doing this. Don't you know that I'm like, yeah. Boom, boom, boom. I'm (laughs) exhausted. You're exhausted. I feel depleted. You feel depleted. I feel like I'm working my ass off and you don't care. You feel like you're at home holding it down, working your ass off, and I don't even give a care about you, but I care about it. Right. And now all of a sudden we're fighting each other. When really we're living our lives when we're supposed to be fighting for the same thing, which is our lives. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Does this song sound familiar, y'all? Yeah. Do you see the conversation going back and forth from the traps we all go? Does this sound familiar? To then, boom, the awareness of it and to choosing your position to step out of that. This is your one life and just be honest and to let go and let one another like. Do you really want to control your spouse or do you really just like fucking want them to be happy? And if, you know. And do you like, ultimately, I feel like what we what we want is security. What we want is to not feel disempowered. And we have so much control over that Mm. um, when we make these choices. Mm. Um, And instead of me. Even uh, attaching sounds, that to you and what you're that doing seems counterintuitive for people. It's like people have been trying to control. You're saying the quickest way for them to feel certain and secure is to relinquish and let go of all control of someone else. Come on, yeah. Like when we're trying to control someone else, even if it's your husband, nothing, oh my god, there's no controlling you. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> not everyone is married to a Matt Clemmer, but <laughs> I tried. I tried. I was holding on tight to that control, like <laughs> with reins. Like I'm going to like break this. Like I don't know. Some is there a horse analogy here? <laughs> so, I tried. Um, I thought I. I thought I. I could. I thought I could get through to you by like being like ah holding Mm. so tight to it Mm. um the ultimate disempowerment is when we are trying to control someone else it is impossible it is not going (laughs) if they even if they do come along your way it's either out of their own disempowerment or it's not genuine Um, how dare we think (laughs) that we know what's best for someone else no Because we're ultimately wanting what's best for all of us, right? Or like the two of us in our partnership. But, but yeah, it's um, like relinquishing that control and then putting it on myself and knowing that you're going to do the same Mm. and that uh, we have each other. Mm. And you're controlling you and I'm controlling me. Mm. And we're finding ways of um, Mm -hmm. what that looks like Mm -hmm. and um, controlling and mitigating any resentments and um, so in one of them back yeah. to me traveling is like she took all bets off i don't even expect to hear from you, you don't owe me shit right. Right? only because i knew any putting any sort of like like mm-hmm. i said text me at night i knew that wasn't like that is setting if, us up for failure because if i didn't then now you're pissed and yeah. i didn't keep my word blah blah yeah. and so it's like how can we do this protect us all you set us both free yeah. by not putting any expectations right. so that you're and totally free and i'm free so from now if worrying talk at yeah. all it's just like a pleasant surprise it's the best and it yeah. turns into a lot of talk it, and yeah fun talk and pics and all kinds i of mean things. yeah <laughs> You know? Yeah. Because yeah, of freedom, it, because we fucking are in love, right? Yeah. But and yeah. Because we get to, we're free to be, not because we got to, because yeah. you're feeling some sort of way and now got me feeling some sort of way. Now our creativity zapped 
in our freedom, even our sexual expression, yeah. energetically is already altered because one of us was feeling a certain type of weight, right? Yeah. And you have the power play of setting us free from that. Yeah. This is why I told y'all to take notes because she set me free and set us free out of the ping pong. It was setting me free as you, well. <laughs> yeah, of you yeah. are statements. You did statements. Yeah. Identity statements of ping pong to one another. We're right? setting us up for failure not by mm. not being realistic. Mm. Because like it sounds severe to be like you don't have to. Mm -hmm. You don't have to communicate with us mm -hmm. at all. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, but you meant it though, even though I, oh, I mean it more. Yeah, but I had to mean it. But I, we came to that because any other option felt like it was going to ultimately fail because I'm crazy as hell. You, I'm wild as hell. Did. She's like, yeah, well, it ain't realistic to even. Expect my man to fucking call me. <laughs> Not at a certain time or like, like, yeah. and. You know, going back to my Harry Potter trip, no, which was really yeah. amazing. But yeah. you gave me that same gift oh, where it course. was like, you don't have to communicate yeah. with me at all. And, 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 and we had three kids. And yeah. one of them was like every two hour bottle and diapers at the time. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? And you were holding like, it down. Come on. And yeah. but that was a huge gift to me. Yes. Uh, because there were moments where I'd see you text pictures of the kids, but I didn't have a moment. And I mm -hmm. that wasn't the right moment for me mm -hmm. to be able to sit down. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, I, but I didn't feel that pressure like, oh, shoot, here's, he's texting me. It's a picture of the kids. I should probably like stop mm -hmm. what I'm doing mm -hmm. and, um, and call. I knew that pressure was off of me and that you were just sending me um, mm -hmm. love the same way I do for you when you're gone. And, um, and so I got to experience it. I've also been on trips with people where their partners or their kids Blown were calling up. constantly. And Rotting they would look at me and be like, why isn't your family doing that? And it was like, oh, because we learned like yeah. it's such a gift to give each other. My God. Yeah, ultimately. Um, but it just came down from communicating. But it was cool to, for me to get to experience it and understand it. That, you know, when you're home, um, Time's a little slower sometimes, especially with kids or if you're trying to do freelance stuff like I totally. do and um, just you're just kind of you know, stuck in your regular bubble. We're in different worlds. You have at the no time. idea. You know so, um, yeah, different worlds. And that's to give each other the room. Yeah. You know, and that's why I love like how long we've been together. 15 years. Almost, <laughs> so. almost 14. We okay. always bump it up just a little bit. <laughs> Well, yeah, it's it's going on 14. And what do you say? Like, you, you know, I can't quote you, but talks about like further exploration and discovery of one another, like not to fall into the trap of feeling like we got each other's car. We know each other figured out. I even do though, not have you figured out. And I know even, you don't have me figured out, even though you, at the same time, even though you say you don't have me figured out. The same time you say you know me better than anybody. I do, but I also know that <laughs> you could turn on a dime and like. <laughs> right. um, but it's that for the lifetime of like curiosity. Curiosity. Yeah, because I do. I feel like you know me better than anyone, and I know you better than anyone. But that's the capacity but that we've shown each other. And if we're gonna be curious, how do we even have room to be curious? What is there more to be curious about? Lest we have created the safety to even like share, yeah, that there might be something else going on in there, yeah, that I might be curious about, yeah, that you wouldn't dare share, yeah, unless, right, yeah, we like somehow created it to where it's like, tell me, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you no, know? yeah, and it becomes exciting. You're like, I want to know this, like. Um, I want to know everything. And obviously, since I had been sick and I technically still struggle, but like it has changed me. And since you came home from Oregon mm. and had this like, you know, near death experience, mm. it's changed you. And so mm -hmm. we're even tonight, today in this season, the past month, month and a half, we've been getting to know each other. Who who is <laughs> Matt after this traumatic AKA, experience who is aka <laughs> we done been having our ass handed to yeah. us <laughs> left and right and yeah. left and right it's been um it's been a really challenging uh, couple months really and um 
in a lot of ways I've seen it change it change us, but we've also kind of been changing together. Come on. Um, so I oh. I mean we're still relatively young, right? And so like I feel like we still have another second half of our life to go and like there's no way we're not gonna have different iterations and change a million times over and um to have that safety to um be able to change. And guys, in case you're listening right now, thinking like, oh, Matt and Katie, they've got the best relationship. Oh, God, no. <laughs> Man, we could just be more like Matt and Katie. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 no. <laughs> not guys, not it's even not a about. little bit. <laughs> well, damn, girl. I'll it's just say that. the absolute worst. Well, but yeah, our relationship how, how is long? amazing, but it's also just like everyone else's. It's complicated. It's stupid. We get like... Um, we've gotten ourselves into some of the craziest like <laughs> fights and situations and um, it, but ultimately um, our position is always that we love each other um, no matter what that looks like. And um, it's allowed us to be able to try to communicate better, <laughs> um, to be honest with each other, um, even if it's not easy. And with that can come fights. And so it's like, again, it's it's not easy and it's worth it, but it doesn't mean it's always going to be received. And it's like, again, you can't have these expectations attached. I'm going to be honest and they're going to love it. And they're going to like. I just listen to the Tattoo Guardians podcast. I'm going to go home. I have a whole talk with them. I'm going to say this and they're going to be, oh, okay, bet. <laughs> no, I, I mean, it ultimately, it shows you so much, though. What do you really want? Um, we can all decide where we choose to stop, but that tells us nothing about. I'd rather talk about where we're going. Yeah. Um, I've said it so many times in the past. The only thing sometimes more powerful than our actions are our reactions. And yes, we can get caught up in our feels because of our actions. But eventually, like, how are we going to react in the midst of the storm with one another? How do we still love one another in spite of the hurt and the anger and we're mad at each other, right? Um, all of that matters. Um, but we're not on here because our shit's perfect, that's for sure. But I've even said this before. The only reason why I still have a brother or a friend or a wife isn't because of our perfect track record, but it's because along the way we've chosen forgiveness. Yeah. Right. Oh yeah. And that's and what I need saying. it. I need it well, desperately. And that's what and you I were know saying you, was yeah. is worth it. It's worth it. Yeah. It's worth it. And like I said, ultimately you will find out who you're with. Um, if that's not being offered up to you, then that's your answer, right? And. Um, if what's not being offered up? Forgiveness, mm. um, empathy, love um, at the end of all of it. Because obviously we, we still um, have knee-jerk reactions to each other. You probably make me madder well, than anyone could possibly make me. And I would probably say that the same, right? I was about to say for all our people listening, you talking this forgiveness shit, but you don't understand what they said to me. Yeah. You don't understand how bad they hurt me. Yeah. Like, when you guys are talking forgiveness shit, like, there's lines you just don't cross, though. Yeah, and that's right? everyone's lines look differently. Everyone's I'm boundaries just saying, look different. Though, or are there? I don't know. Probably. Where, <laughs> but, I, I know, but I, I saying, know what you're saying. But yeah. That's the whole fucking stick on forgiveness yeah. is like, if it was something easy to forgive, you probably would need forgiveness. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? But usually for me, like, a lot of things to forgive for the things that are hard, right? Yeah. Even yeah. on myself. Like, it's one forgiving one another, but, you know, we're like, oh, yeah. It's forgiving ourselves, yeah. too. But even me knowing, like, if I know you're having a hard time forgiving yourself from overstepping or doing something that maybe hurt me. I need to hear that. I need mm. to know that because then that can cause m me to be a little calmer, a little less like you need to know how bad you hurt me. Mm. If I know that you're already like beating yourself up about something or um, you're hurting just as much mm -hmm. um, 
because you hurt me, then um, that can kind of um, take, allow me to take a deep breath. And um, I don't feel like I have to push and like see me, see my pain as much because I, I have an understanding that you do. Um, but that takes communicating. And I think um, mm, we've sorry. even had missteps in that recently. It was like, because I wasn't hearing certain things from you, I was making the assumption that it didn't exist internally within you at all. Isn't that crazy <laughs> how quick we are to start <coughs> writing our own stories. Right. Because we can only go off of what the other person is giving us and maybe some historical, like right. in so the in past. That, what, what broke through? Was it me finally showing you or communicating that way? Or was it you coming to me saying, hey, <clears throat> I'm not. I need you. I need to know what came first. I can't remember, I but communication know. happened. Ultimately, it was either like I communicated. You, you were able to communicate with me that yeah. how badly um, you were hurting from any sort mm-hmm. of like hurting me, and so um, that caused me um, to calm down a little bit and not feel this urge to be like, "See me, see my pain." Mm-hmm. Um, I know we've gotten off on a tangent as far as conventions go, but. Um, yeah, I guess it's all applicable. It's um, it is, and really just a quick recap of like the four stages you brought us through. Like stage one, what did you call it? Understanding the culture of yeah. conventions, and in, on an individual level, like your partner, your spouse, understanding their culture, what I call their why, what their plan is, what they're going to the show for, and then your guys' plan together and your roles together, even in what that support looks like, even if it becomes hands off. It seems hands off can be the most power play, but it's all in your awareness and clear, fucking keeping it 100, authentic, real. It's not about what you wish. It's about what you need, like yeah. each other, right? And that's empowering. If you tell me what you need and I know I can fulfill that, mm. I want to be the one that fulfills that. Mm. Like, I want to know what you need and I want yeah. the chance to be able yeah. to say, I got that. Like, that's me. Even like when we learned that silly book, The Five Love Languages, yeah. and took the test and learned one. I used to buy her fresh flowers every week and five love languages. One's giver and receiver of gifts. That wasn't one of her top love languages. Acts of service was for me to like help with the dishes was showing her more love than me buying her flowers. Right. Yeah. Back to wanting to know so that I can. Right. Yeah. And one another's needs, just how one another even receives love, what I need, what fills me up at a show, what f- she needs and vice versa. So that's a good recap. Yeah. Step one is understanding one another's needs. The why, what yeah. you're calling the our within culture, that culture, <laughs> yeah, you know the convention. Okay, and then the second one we mentioned tonight was what? Clearly communicating that um, and any expectations you might have or need to let go of. Come on, yeah. just getting on the same fucking page before we even go. Like we fought the past fucking how many shows before this next one? Let's <laughs> yeah. get on the same damn page yeah. somehow. How does this keep happening? Right. Yeah, like what are what is making mm-hmm. you feel resentment or um, any sort of pain and vice versa? And, yep. um, and hopefully um, everyone can have that safety or create it um, or be the um, the breakthrough person to Love do it. it. Whether you feel safe or not, you just know it's important. Come on. Come on. Okay. And then recap. What's the and then mitigating thing? your resentments or like yeah. trying to keep them from happening at all or um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. or realizing that it's time to stop the ones mm-hmm. that you are it's maintaining or holding it. on to. Sticking to it. Like, and not setting yourself up to yeah, fail. <laughs> I love it. So that's number three. Yeah. Number one is like clear communication, your why, who we are going into this deal and the culture of us as a couple going into this show number two is like clearly communicating like what that looks like i will say there's a caveat to that that something where we misstepped was assuming that that was how we were going to feel our entire relationship right that's what you were going to need we didn't touch base again and be like hey actually like i would like you to come to shows or i would like we just assumed okay this is our position and forever and we never talked about it again and And that's not good so like if you start getting this kind of um, Which is why she's coming to Hunts Vegas because yeah. eventually I brought up like, you know, like even it's been like years. It'd be cool to have you at a show. I was like, that's <laughs> good know? for me to know. I always assumed you were like, 
oh, thank God I don't have like to worry about yeah. like another person. I yeah. thought I was giving you this gift by not going. Um, yeah. But yeah, we didn't communicate that. So that mm -hmm. should probably be a little bit of like a, a side note that to just revisit. because you communicate once does not mean that right. you shouldn't do it almost every time. Mm -hmm. um, you guys are leaving again mm -hmm. for another mm -hmm. convention or like anytime, you know, actually, I think my needs are changing. Come on this this week, you know, whatever. Yeah, for real. Yeah. I love that communication. Yeah. And then again, mitigating the expectations. But I like it. You can take it show by show travel trip by trip. Yeah. Right. Season by season. Um, yeah. 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 And then ultimately um, for the supporting partner, um, the person who um, either either staying home or showing up to these conventions to support their artist um, spouse uh, yep. partner whatever um, to understand that the uh, the ultimate control is letting go and um, controlling yourself and your own needs and Which just so, see what happens so sexy <laughs> yeah it's empowering and I'm, I'm assuming that's what is attractive about that is that it's because i'm in my power i'm, I'm trying to like figure out how can i stay in my power and i'm um, not then disempower you right if and i'm feeling makes disempowered. me whole yeah. and knowing she's got my back and she's really rooting me on now i can laser focus on being the best me because i got support yeah. from home Versus feeling torn that I've got to give all my energy into the show and these people and my client and energy into home equally and try and make them all happy. And I'm depleted as fuck, right? I was already singing that song earlier. This is the trap. Yeah. But then on the flip side, then I know that I am prioritized, that you love me, that like um, you aren't doing these things um over me you're not choosing these things you're the over backbone me. yeah of it all like the source like without you and i being good nothing else matters but it you make me feel cool. that way and that's an, an important part of it it's yeah. not i can't assume that it's not assumed but you you mm. do make me feel that way before you even leave and then it makes me want like i want to know if you're traveling like go see things like go have fun it's not like you better just be like keeping your your and nose you down sent me out to dinner alone yeah. tonight and for cocktails yeah by myself go have fun go yeah you know that's that makes me happy. Um, but that's because you've, I feel fulfilled and, and I'm, you've made me happy. And so it's just, yeah, this mutual kind I'm of like exchange. You, you guys, I've said it before. You can't out give God in the universe, but it's fun to try. You can't out give one another freedom and love abundance, but it's fun to try because she's yeah. given me so much. And by default, I give her so much. And then it makes her give me so much. Yeah. And it makes me give her so yeah, much. Or I want to. Like, I want to please her constantly. And you know what? That makes her just please me. That makes me really want to please her. It's that word you remember at the beginning. So much, so much pleasure. <laughs> this is getting to be an after dark <laughs> episode. Uh, um, your analogy of being open palmed, yeah, versus keeping our yeah, you know, yeah. It reminds me of that silly analogy again of like. Where they'll put a banana in a hole and a monkey will stick his hand in. Like, what? You know what I'm saying? I don't know that this is a common analogy. Yeah, is okay. It? Well, they get I trapped because they, they won't let go the of the banana. The, the monkey will grab the banana <laughs> and then his hand will not come back out of the hole. Yeah. They'll set traps all over for monkeys. The, if the monkey, if they just let the banana go, their hand will come out. They can be free. They'll even see the guys coming. They want that them. banana. They will not let go. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And they're trying to take and control what's theirs. Yeah. And that fucking banana. Right. And it leads to their death, their demise. Yeah. Now they were in control. They got to, but that's what right. their reward was. But if they could have just let go, it would have led to their freedom. Yeah. And, you know, again, give or get. They don't give to get. It comes with the territory. By you learning to let go and giving, you've gotten so much. And so have I. Yeah. yeah. I think what I was going to say was maybe being um, willing to be a breakthrough person. I can't remember, but 
um, with this talking about this exchange of like, oh, you you give to me and I give to you. Someone has to start it. You know, like it, um, on, you could be like playing chicken a little bit. The like initiator. he's he's got to be the one. Yeah, to start I just it. heard this podcast and it sounds like a good idea. But that bitch, you don't even know. Like, yeah. so she needs to listen to this and she gets wants to get her shit right and ask me for forgiveness. <laughs> yeah. Then maybe we can start this. Oh, right? yeah. It's it, hard. Right. It's yeah. hard. But someone, someone's got to do it again behind every good man's a great woman. Guys, in our relationship, she's been the initiator probably every time. Yeah. And it was for me as much as it was for you. Like, yes, this is your one life, but it's mine, too. And like, but you even initiated your own self power of like taking your own self control, like setting the pace. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. uh, And it's not just because like. A, you had your shit together, or B, because yeah. we were perfect, or because I was so perfect, it was easy for you to choose that. Because, like, no, someone, it's almost out of desperation. Like, yes, um, yes, yes, yes. What do we have to lose? You know, like, or before we lose it all. Right. We have a lot to lose, actually. <laughs> <laughs> but if things were so bad, it was like, well, like, what? Do I, like, do I risk this what thing? Like, you what's th- it? <laughs> You're right. I was going to say, like, what made you, like, step up to the plate and decide, Fuck it. This is our one life. I'm just going to be honest and keep it real. And it probably was not a desperation. It was. We were, you were about to, like, yeah, divorce like, me. Oh, yeah. Not, I was like, this know? is done. This just felt like um, I didn't like who I was being. And <laughs> I didn't um, like who you were being. Yeah. And I knew, like, I, I love myself enough and I loved you enough that I knew, like, we aren't being... Um, we aren't being true to ourselves together in this way. And it's like, maybe it would be better if like, Mm -hmm. I love you enough to like, I don't want to be like this to you. Mm. And I'm sure you felt the same way, um, Mm -hmm. you know, in some capacity where it's like, you didn't like Mm -hmm. how you were being with me. Mm -hmm. Um, And you do kind of just hit a point where it's like, um, yes, this is going to be hard, but like, what, what's the alternative? Like Mm -hmm. living, um, like making each other miserable. Mm -hmm. Um, living kind of like a half life but instead of where some people in that point would choose just like let's drive the pain into the ground and the accusations and because of my pain i'm gonna cost you more pain and be yeah. like all of your flaw what well, but somewhere just like there's a skirt a record scratch, like yeah. record scratch you're stopping <laughs> everything yeah it's just like ah well let's just be honest here yeah and be logical this is our one life. Uh, we're going to talk about co-parenting, you know, and like, right. And it was yeah. almost like conversation of emotions aside. Yeah. But in that place of looking at it, it's like, wow, this is our one life, our reality. Because so many people like have drama night after night, week after month after month, as if like we fucking live forever or something. Like, <laughs> right. You know, right. And I think there was a line in the sand where you realize like, well, fuck, this is our life. And it's like midway through and. Yeah. We got kids and shit. Like, this just doesn't work. And when something's not working, like, you can continue to just live this life that's not working. Yeah. And I think it just caused you to all of a sudden somehow be brutally honest. Yeah. I had to. With yourself and me and our reality and everything. Yeah. Instead of like playing any more twists and games, or he said, it was just like, um, again, emotions set aside, just brutally honest. But that, honesty led to your truth yeah which led to me finding my truth yeah which led to us finding our truth yeah and a lot of that was realizing where i was resentful and how i was how that was manifesting and how i was like making you pay penance for this like um Mm. this resentment that i had Mm. that i felt like i couldn't let go of because like it was still happening, you know, i.e. I feel like I'm in trouble. Yeah. Every day. Yeah. And so you probably were because I was just right. like, well, there he's doing that thing again. And that's, like, what calling the ping, yeah. the, that's what I'm calling the ping pong. Yeah. You know? One thing that I, you know, has helped us and maybe this can I, I, uh, <coughs> is sometimes when you just cannot fundamentally agree on something is to put a pause on that and say, okay, we can agree on this, but what can we agree on? What do we want moving forward? So yes, we can keep this here and maybe come back to it someday. Maybe we never will come back to it. Can we do that? Like, and not hold resentments, but like, 
I think for us, we've had to do that to where it's like, we love each other. We're committed to each other. We just fundamentally don't agree on what happened or what this thing is. And, but what we can agree on is that we want to be together yeah. and we want to move past this thing. And so maybe it's better to leave that there and say, this is what we're going to do moving forward. So make sure this doesn't happen anymore mm-hmm. um, to make sure we're not at such an impasse. Mm-hmm. And that's situational. But mm-hmm. um, I, I do know that that has helped us. Just clear, clear communication. Which we're still not great at. Yeah. But even just the willingness, and that's what I, I, mean, that's what I was going to say. Yeah. The word, the word of like the years. The, the willingness, willingness and connection. Yeah. Just the willingness. And if I know you're willing and you mm-hmm. know I'm willing, then we can, we can like talk mm-hmm. about anything and kind of conquer anything. Totally. Yeah. Totally. Willingness. Totally. That's a heart position in that sometimes we've had to lean on that when words aren't serving us. Oh, yeah. You know? Yeah. There are times where words were not helping. No, they were hurting pretty badly. You know? (laughs) Yeah. And the only thing that helped was my heart and my eyes. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You know? Yeah, I could see. I could see through you know, a lot of stuff. And I, I hope that everyone's, you know, partnered up with someone that you can see through um, some of that. Yeah. That like extra bullshit that happens when we're fighting and um, <coughs> when um, we're maybe just even trying to hurt each other. Like you hurt me now. I'm going to like, now I, I know how to hurt you. And that's yeah. the vulnerable thing about being with like well, in a in partnership is I know how I know your pain like your pain spots and like what can hurt you and you know mine and um you know it's a trap it could be a trap to be like I'm gonna zing him and he's like I'm gonna zing her <laughs> yeah <laughs> but like to really really like <laughs> see past all that noise to do what then um what we also do which is to recreate our love yeah you know yeah. Like we choose our position, we rechoose it, right? Like, yeah. Just like we can choose our resentments and keep picking them up every day, or we can look at them and be like, "Oh, these are definitely not serving me, not serving us back for you, to you, taking your own fucking power back." And be like, "This resentment, he don't give two fucks, and it's fucking with me, right?" Like, yeah. That's just how you've just been the power play all along with like, you know. Um, so I just I'm thankful for you. I'm thankful that you were receptive to it. Yeah. You know, like if you weren't, that would have been the answer and, yeah. you know, would have like moved on in love, but, um, oh or with love, mm-hmm. uh, but that would have been it, you know? Yeah. Um, so the fact that you were receptive to it and, um, and, and willing again, willing to like do this hard work uh, together is still ongoing. It's happening now. It's going to continue to happen. Ladies and gentlemen, imperfect couples in the <laughs> tattoo industry. Can we get a witness? Hey. <laughs> it is definitely a trying industry to, yeah. <laughs> to, uh, well, being couples is trying. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Especially, yeah, in this industry, it, uh, it can be, or it doesn't have to be. And I think that's what we found out. Because for us, it's bliss now. Like, Yeah, or it's just you like, know, you know. Like, we haven't had, like, you know, other than, like, the traumatic experience happened to me in Oregon. Like, me doing shows, we haven't had, like, issues in years. No, once we figured out um, how to not set ourselves up or mm-hmm. to set you up, really, for any sort of failure and we managed our expectations then oh, yeah it's been so good it's, yeah and then it, then it started yeah. yeah that's when the magic trick came like well this feels yeah, like she hears from me more i'm sending her pictures yeah and this and you know coming home whoa yeah all that good stuff. it's all yeah it's all good but it it started with being uh, willing to say this is what this is what i need what do you need and right there being willing to say this is what I need. What do you need? And that right there has set us free in every area of a relationship. It continues to be the questions we live into. 
in our sex life, in our past, in our present, yeah. in our future, um, in our private life, our personal life, and in our thoughts that are our secret life that no one knows about unless we're going to let one another know about it, right? Like yeah. how deep do you really go with one another? And it's not because we haven't hurt one another. It's not because there hasn't been times where we want to totally retract and be like, fuck it, this is vulnerable. I should have warned myself to you than anybody. You just hurt me. All bets off, retract, yeah, retreat, I'll never retreat. do that again. Never, right? <laughs> yeah. Right? And then what? Now, then after all that, how do you react again, <laughs> right? <sighs> right, yeah. but who's your person? Right? She's my person. You know, and we're speaking from years of experience in the beauty in the midst of the imperfection, which starts to smell perfect. <laughs> <laughs> right. And the beauty of uh, your industry is that so much of it you can make what you want and there's mm. so much creativity in it. And mm. to be partnered in that and mm. then our relationship becomes mm -hmm. the same yeah. where we can make it anything we want it mm -hmm. to be and it can be this very creative playful fun curious yeah. Yeah. Um, thing it's um mm -hmm. it's a gift mm -hmm. to be in this um artistic community mm -hmm. and and see how that can enrich mm -hmm. our relationship mm -hmm. and the relationships that um when you do leave you connect with so many people and then by proxy then those mm -hmm. people because of the way you speak about me, mm -hmm. which is always like, you know, really humbling to hear how kind you are and the mm -hmm. way you speak of me. But then those people become my people. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't know, like I, I'm, I'm sure a lot of industries are, are this way, but this seems really, really um, there's something very special about um, the connectedness and the creativity and the um, all of the love mm -hmm. that is cultivated in the tattoo industry. Love it. Yeah. Ah, good. Yeah, it, it, it can enrich your relationships if you let it. And why not as if this is our one life? <laughs> why not? You know, why not? As if whatever show you and your spouse are talking about, it's your one life this year, this season. Like, Do you have the willingness to really talk out with one another of each other's needs and desires so that you're both winning and Filled and fighting together for the same things on the same fucking team, like whole and like really into each other and all that, right? Yeah. Oh, it's worth it. It's worth it. It's the only option <laughs> that's worth fighting for. Even if we yeah. got to fight one another a few times to figure out, fuck, we're supposed to be fighting on the same team, right? Yeah. Whatever. It's worth it. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. And I can't wait to see what doing conventions together is going to mm -hmm. be like for, for us. And it'll be fun to come back and, and let you guys know, um, mm -hmm. like, get to experience something new. Yeah, it will be fun. <laughs> All of y'all that are coming to Hunts Vegas, Huntsville, Alabama, June 9th and 10th. Katie and I will be there. I think it's. I think I get to, you know, Rock's got me, I'm judging all weekend. Yeah. It's got me and Steve Butcher and Joshua Carlton, uh, Mohawk Jesse, maybe even Mr. Tony Johnson, oh. maybe even our brother Pooch, some badasses all teaching seminars. My God, I there's going to be so much goodness serving you all from our table. Katie Stratton, Clemmer, thank you for sitting by my side. Oh, my gosh. Uh, I, Always in line. Yeah. But even today, tonight, <laughs> it's 2.19 a.m. And we wild as hell. We're we don't do this. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even recognize myself. <laughs> we don't even do this, but we do it for you guys. Yeah, this was, um, yeah, this was a lot of fun. I hope. I this hope, is not a yeah. regularly rescheduled recorded time. You no, know, this schedule's is not. Got, <laughs> schedule's got, you know, all around this week. And so yeah. this is Katie and I doing one together yeah committed committed and um yeah. you just got back from hell city yes. um, and so um i know you and josh want to talk more about conventions and stuff and it's just 
um, mm-hmm. this seems to be like the season um, for it. Right. And I know they're all year, all year long, but speaking um, of, I'll oh, go ahead. Baby. No, no, I just, um, I'm glad that we got to talk about this. Um, mm-hmm. And if it can help some couples as they kind of please, go into this busy guys, if you, yeah, season. if it's helped you as a couple with yourself, your spouse, your partner, let us know, please. It, mm, it means a whole lot. And yeah, yeah, Shout out to so many of you who came up to me at Hell City and introduced yourself and told me that you listened to this show and how much it's touched, changed, and impacted your life. That you have the courage to come up and say so to me and introduce yourself to me. And I needed to hear it. And so thank you, all of you. My God, under the sound of my voice right now, you beautiful guardians, wherever you're at in the world, thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your listening. Hopefully today's conversation has enriched your life and perception on what's possible with you in partnership with someone else on this beautiful, crazy, wild, clumsy journey called life. We love you. I love you, my wife, Katie. I love you. Love you all. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Let's go to bed. Guardians. I'm really tired now. <laughs> hey, Guardians, we'll see you next week. Love you all. Thanks. Love you guys. Bye.